Hey, guess what? We are back once again at IAPA 2010 here in Orlando. So we are standing here with Peter at KMG. Now, Peter, you guys have this amazing, crazy looking new ride, which I wish I could try to describe it, but I can't because it looks that insane. Can you give us a little bit of rundown on what this insane looking device is? Okay, um, I will try to explain you what it is. It's uh, named the Mission Space. The ride is 250 feet high and it's the tallest transportable ride for amusement parks. Wow. It is a traveling ride, um, also available for parks. Um, what I'll do, I'll try right now how it works to explain to you, and then uh, you can ask me some more questions if okay, you like. Okay, cool. So now you said it's a traveling ride, so will we see this at places like Oktoberfest and some of like the world's biggest fairs? Yeah, it's going to be uh, next year in Holland, the Netherlands, in uh, Tilburg, which is the largest fair in, uh, in Europe in July. It's also going to be in uh, October Fest in Munich, Dusseldorf, Germany, some big fairs. Excellent, excellent. All right, so give us the lowdown on what this thing does. Okay, the ride is uh, mounted on four semi-trailers. Setup is without a crane. The uh, whole story about the ride is that we were trying to uh, expose um, what we can manufacture. This ride, 250 feet high, on only four semi-trailers and set up without a crane. The thing is, we have four semis for the supports, or two for the supports. One section is the semi itself. The blue part will go down into the yellow part, and that's the semi. The fourth semi is the centerpiece here. On this ride, uh, we can load 20 persons. With this cylinders, the arms fall down. So, these gondolas are going to be on the platform on each side. You can load and unload 10 persons on each side. Then the arms go up. Underneath here, there's a bearing, so the whole tower rotates by itself. When the arms are up in the air, the arms start going up and down. There is an eccentric piece in, inside of here, a, um, what you call this uh, mechanical device. Right. So the arms go up and down 10 meters, which is approximately 30 feet. So can you imagine the, the whole tower turning, arms going up and down, the car swing in and out at a height of Let's say the cars are about 240 feet. Now. So, so can I say that that'll be sort of like an oh shit moment for most people? Yeah, yeah, yeah probably. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. All right, so now you guys also have some new uh, designs as far as your restraint system goes, they see on some of your rides, right? Correct? Yes. Let's, uh, let's actually walk over and have a look at something that's going into Maury's Piers. Now, this is, this is a, a, a take on, your, um, on the, the current Fireball um, flat ride. Now, this is a lap bar only restraint. Yeah, do we uh, normally, maybe I can show you here, on the uh, XXL and on the Fireball rides, we have the same cars but with the shoulder restraints. Yep. By special request of Maurice Spears, because they ordered the Fireball, they said we would like to have the ride but we don't want the shoulder restraints. We want something just at the lap bar because we want an extra thrill for the ride. So together with these guys, the engineers from Maurice Spears, we developed a new system, which is actually a lap bar with uh, when you sit in a car, you rotate the arm and then you move it towards you. Cool. There is um, the position of the uh, lap bar is uh, multifunctional, no, not multifunctional. It will close in any size. Cool. There are two cylinders inside here, so pressure on both cylinders should be exactly the same, and then the right will go. If not, or if the lap bar is still left open a little bit, the ride won't go. So when you say it's any size, does that mean it's big American friendly? Also. Excellent. <laughs> That'll make a lot of our readers very happy. Okay. Um, something else to it is because there is no shoulder restraint, um, we changed and adapted the, the bars here, the handles, for the smaller kids. Cool. So that they still feel safe in the ride. As you can imagine, when there is only a lap bar system and not a shoulder restraint, you're going to experience an extra thrill because you're moving more sideways and forwards and backwards. Yep. Because the tubs rotate, there will be zero gravity, zero, now zero G-force. There's no negative, you're not being pulled out and not being pushed into the seat. Now, is this going to be a design, if you have a, a current uh, model of this, will there be a retrofit available? Um, yes, it is, it is, yeah. Cool. All right, Peter, I want to say thank you for your time, and uh, we look forward to... Uh, Spinning on some of your new rides coming up soon. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, take care. All right, so we are talking with Walter Bollinger, who is the B of B&M. Now, you guys had a pretty exciting year. You opened up uh, Intimidator down at Carowinds, and so far that's been uh, one of the uh, 
most critically acclaimed coasters of the year. Can you talk about that project a little bit? It was a very exciting project because of the height of the coaster, uh, the air time that we create. Uh, the coaster was very well received by the park and by the guests in the park. So it was very exciting for us. Excellent. So now, this is, if I, if I recall correctly, this is the third of the, the hyper coasters you guys have done for Cedar Fair now? Yes, I think we did one at Canada Wonderland, another one at Kings Island, and this is the third one. Excellent. And it also uses the new style seating you guys are doing. Now, is that something that you guys recommend to the parks? Is that something the parks come and say, can you guys arrange the seats this way? Or how does that, how is that decision made? Usually the park decides. I think we propose both seating arrangements, the four abreast of the panoramic seating arrangement, and the park decides. Right. Now, up front over here we have, uh, is this uh, one of the cars from Manta over at SeaWorld, correct? It's a coach from Manta at SeaWorld. It's also very popular. I think we also play with the water. Excellent. So it's very popular. Now, when you guys, uh, when they were developing the whole uh, water effects and everything, like how much involvement does B&M have on sort of the external effects of the ride just to make sure that it works well with the ride systems? I think we designed it to be very close to the water. There was a lot of discussion with uh, SeaWorld about that. But the water effect itself was developed by SeaWorld. Excellent. Now, I know, I know you can't talk too much about 2011, but it sounds like, from what we've heard, there's a few exciting projects out there that we can look forward to. Yes, there's uh, many courses which will open in 2011 and 2012, <laughs> so we're very excited. All right, well, we won't grill you anymore on that because we know what it's like. You can't, uh, can't talk about stuff, which is totally fine. We get it. Walter, I just want to say thank you for spending some time with us, and uh, we always look forward to uh, riding your coasters. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, so this is definitely the thing that we came all the way from California. I believe that frozen Coke is going to be the product of choice here. Frozen Coke, please. Frozen Coke it is. I can't wait. Oh, man. This is the stuff. This is what IAPA is all about. All right, so we're here with Jeff Chutter, CEO of Whitewater. Now, that's, that's a pretty heavy-duty uh, position you got going there, right? Yes, 30 years later, we're still going strong. Excellent, awesome. So we're standing in front of something here called the Mega Tube, and the fact that it looks like it's a good twice, maybe three times as tall as I am, that's absolutely mega. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what this ride is, the technology behind it, and it looks like you guys may have sold a couple of them. Uh, yes, it's a 20-foot diameter flume. We have this and the Anaconda, which is a 30-foot diameter, and then the Abyss, which goes up to 66 feet. Uh, foot diameter funnel ride. But we've introduced eight new rides into the water park industry this year uh, and, and they've gone frankly like hotcakes around the world. We're, we're uh, on the Aqualoop number 30 sold just before the show wow, that's awesome. and, and that's, that's the one where a trap door drops, you fall vertically down feet first and then you do a complete uh, loop before going into a, a shutdown lane. A whole new uh, technology for the industry. Excellent. The, the Megatube series is one in which we, uh, we're focusing on oscillations. Uh, they are double and four and six person rides, depending on which one you select. Uh, starting off from a tower, uh, serpentine ride down, and then a big drop into the uh, going cross section to the, the, the cylinder of the, of the Megatube, and then oscillating back and forth between going into the next rattle or the next tube uh, and into the pool. So I'm seeing a bunch of like the sold, sold, sold signs here. Can you tell us uh, uh, or what parks can we expect to start to see some of these in uh, 2011? Well, the, um, the one on the top there um, uh, called the Python, that's, that's being installed into NRH2O in Texas, which okay. is uh, North Richland Heights in, in Texas. Cool. Um, the, the one, the Viper, which the Viper, um, that is this pink one here. That's a cross section of it. And we've sold a number of those, including two which are, in fact, flume through flumes. You'll notice this green flume here going through the, the pink flume. And we've got those going into uh, Amazon Falls in Pattaya, Thailand. Uh, we've got it happening in Kish Island, Iran. And we've got it happening in Leonia, India, awesome. um, the, where, where we have a flume going through a flume. All right, so now we're standing in front of the Aqua Loop. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is a trap door slide? Uh, absolutely, you go into the capsule up on top, which you can see, you stand vertically with your arms crossed, 
There's the three, two, one uh, countdown, and then the, door, the, the floor falls from underneath you, and you descend down uh, and do a complete loop before ending in a shutdown lane. Wow, you guys are, are really... Uh, Pushing the envelope. Yeah, yes. definitely. Wow. So now I believe there's a couple of these in the U.S. Noah's Ark got one this past year? Noah's Ark was the first to go in, and in their words, they have never seen such uh, advertising and media coverage of any ride from Popular Mechanic uh, to Good Morning America. It was just phenomenal, the coverage that, that uh, they received and a huge resulting gate attendance for them. Excellent, great. Well, thank you very much for your time, and we look forward to riding lots of your rides uh, on the next coming year. Thank you very much. Appreciate Excellent. it. Thank you. Thanks. All right, so this might be the most scared I've ever been on a trade show. I'm not even going to say where this lap bar is cutting into right now, but let's just say it's sort of the groinal region. All right. All right, so we are on the happy swing at Zamperla. And so far it's kind of gentle. It's gentle, it's rocking. Whee! I feel like I'm gonna kick Colin in the head over here. Okay, ready? Look, 3D, yeah! Whee! All right, so we are here with Alberto Zamperla, the CEO of Zamperla. So why don't you tell us how was 2010 and give us a little sneak peek on 2011. This year was fantastic for us. We were able to achieve a fantastic goal. In 100 days, we complete an amusement park with 19 rides and one ride that was the first prototype in the world. And at the end of the season, we were very happy because everything was working very well. Excellent. So, like behind us, we're looking at uh, some Luna Park, uh, Coney Island uh, displays over here. Can you guys uh, just talk a little bit about that park coming together? I mean, you know, we—I uh, haven't actually been there personally, but we have uh, several of our New Yorkers that visited and said it was just a fantastic, uh, well put together uh, uh, location. And what is good that uh, is a continuous work. Next year, we are going to open a new area that we are going to call Scream Zone because it's going to be a lot of energy. It's for the teenagers and a lot of fun. And in the two years from now, something else that is going to be very interesting. Right, so over here, we also have what looks like uh, a car from your air race attraction. And this is something new for you guys, is that right? It's a new ride that the people is going to experiment uh, to be on a jet fighter and they're going uh, to have a 4G of the accelerations. Excellent. Now this uh, one of those also went into Luna Park, is that correct? Yes, this is the new ride, the one that uh, really attracted a lot of people to the park. So now what else do you guys have coming in 2011 that you sort of want to tell the world about? What's uh, other than uh, your Coney Island um, ventures, what is exciting coming from Zamperla? We are investing more in the roller coaster. That's the reason why we are going to have this cream zone with some new coaster where the people is going to lay down and have the experience again to fly. Another one is going to be a moto coaster where you're going to be launched at uh, three point, uh, uh, you're going to reach 100 kilometers in an hour in 3.2 seconds. Excellent. Now that sounds like a lot of fun. Looking forward to actually checking out uh, uh, Luna Park at Coney Island next year. We'll be there. So thank you very, very much for your time. Thank Wait you. Wait for you there. Excellent. Thank, thank you. Thank you.